so hello students today topic we are going to discuss is the elevator we use in the dentistry so first of all you should know is what are the basic parts of elevator so elevator has three parts number 1 is the blade so this region is the blade other is the shank portion and third one is the handle portion so elevator has three parts the blade shank and the handle now this blade can be of different types so what are the types of blade it can be either straight type or triangular type so the example of straight blade is straight type is straight elevator so this one is the straight elevator other is the triangular type and the triangular type is the this one is the crier elevator so remember for your exam the most common elevator we use to luxate teeth is yes it is the straight type we have miller and port elevator so this one is the miller elevator remember for it remember it for your mcq part and this one is the port elevator so what you see is they are at angle to the shank another we have another we have is a cross bar a cross bar type elevator where handle is at right angle to the shank so the next question that immediately that is asked by brain is why the miller and port are angulated why the cross bar is at right angle to the shank so well the miller and the port are angulated because of their use in the posterior teeth and better assess as simple as that so you should know where and how to apply your knowledge other question is why cross bar the handle is at right angle to the shank so according to the physics by keeping the handle right angle this would generate a huge amount of force now if the force is high what can it do so if the force is high so it will it will fracture the mandible so the next question that comes to your mind is how to prevent the uh, how to prevent it so when we use elevator we have to place a thumb below the mandible supporting it so now you know three things and you know how to correlate it next comes the triangular type elevator the triangular type elevator is the crier one so it is used when the broken root remains in the socket and the adjacent socket is empty so it will be used it will be used in the case of multi rooted teeth 
as simple as that. The next is the pick type elevator, crane pick elevator. So where it is used, it is used to remove the roots. It, it is used as a lever to elevate the roots from the socket. Now, how will you use it? What we do is we drill a hole three mm deep into the root. The pick is inserted into the hole and the root is elevated using a buckle plate as a fulcrum. So this is the crane pick type elevator. Now let us discuss how the elevators will work. The elevators, they work on the lever principle. That is the most commonly used principle. Remember elevator, it is lever of first order. What is that? In that the fulcrum is between the effort and resistance arm. So the fulcrum is between the effort and the resistance arm. So in order to obtain, to get mechanical advantage, the effort arm. So this arm must be longer than the resistance arm. So the mechanical advantage generated here would be three. So where is the lever principle used? It is used to remove the roots. Example is the straight elevator, crier elevator or apexo elevator. Next moving to is the wedge principle. So according to it, the elevator is forced between the root and the bone at the long axis of the tooth. So what we do is we wedge the elevator or the beaks of forceps between the tooth and the socket in the periodontal ligament space. So what that will do that will displace the tooth occlusally. So the instrument can be further be pushed into the socket to displace the tooth. So remember the mechanical advantage generated here will be 2.5. So remember this for your MCQ portion. The third is the wheel and XL principle. So what is the principle? when a small force is applied to a rim of the wheel, it will, it will exert a large force on the object attached to the axle. So what is wheel and axle principle? According to it, when the root of the multiple rooted tooth is left on the alveolar socket, so elevator is positioned, the elevator is positioned into the socket and is turned. So the handle, so this handle would act as Excel, whereas the tip of the triangular elevator, this one is the tip, it will act as wheel. So what will do? It will rotate the tooth. It will elevate the tooth root from the socket. So what? So when you rotate the handle, the force on the blade 
it is multiplied that creates mechanical advantage and in turn you see is the tooth out of the socket so this principle is applied to it is applied to crier so this one is the crier and crossbar elevators always remember a clinical tip the working tip is introduced always always deep deep into the space between the root and the space that is rotated to remove the root now what are the elevators that fo follows the lever principle they are remember it for your examination point of view they are the straight elevator or crane beak elevators what are the elevators that follow wedge principle they are the apexo elevators what are the elevators that follow the wheel and axle principle they are the crier elevator winter elevator and port elevator so remember this for your mcq point of view now what are the rules that you have to be followed never use adjacent tooth as a fulcrum unless it is to be extracted now think imagine when you can use adjacent teeth as a fulcrum so when will you use that think yes in case during multiple extraction suppose i have to extract this tooth this tooth so here in this case i will use i will use adjacent tooth as fulcrum and this is known as tobies extraction so remember the mnemonic s for tobies and s for smart so this is smart extraction so the tobies extraction is the is the only condition when the adjacent tooth is used as fulcrum it is used during multiple extraction so remember never use buccal plate as a fulcrum except in the case of odontectomy similarly never use lingual plate as a fulcrum always elevate from the mesial side next important is the we are going to discuss is the warwick james elevator so remember for mcq exam it is also known as hockey stick pattern elevator so here you will see the the blade it is straight and at angle to the shank so the blade it has convex and flat surface the flat surface it is the working end and has transfer serration for contact with the uh, root stumps so it is a used in the case of extraction of the primary molars so remember care should be taken with the extraction of primary molars why because of development of permanent premolars underneath them so remember for your exam the broken primary molars can be elevated using the warwick james elevator 
next is the is the mucoperiosteal elevator so this one is this one is number 9 mold periosteal elevator so this was this was asked in your image based question identify this so this is number 9 mold mucoperiosteal elevator so they are used they are used to raise the gingival tissue at the cervical region that has to be detached for the extraction of the tooth so why you need to detach tissue think why you need to detach the tissue so reflecting the mucoperiosteum away from the bone to prevent it being crushed as the fulcrum used is the bone so it has two ends the sharp point end that is used to reflect the dental papilla and the broad end to elevate the tissue from the bone so we can use it either with the push stroke pull stroke the push stroke that is used to separate the periosteum from the bone and the pull stroke that tends to tear the tissue if not used carefully next comes the next comes the hmm, luxators so luxators they resembles elevator in shape but their tips they are very delicate than the elevators so their tips they are thin sharp so they can break if the force is applied during the extraction so if they are thin so they can be easily inserted into the narrow apical space true another is the these are the periotomes periotomes so what are periotomes and how they function so the periotomes it is another tooth extraction instrument with a thin tip it has a tapering it has a tapering blade that is inserted into space between the tooth and the surrounding bones so what does it do it will compress the bone structure so we it allows for a better access to the periodontal ligament so next question that comes to your mind is how, uh, how can you compare these elevators periotomes and luxator elevators they are used in piring motion while luxator they are used in the rotating motion luxator the tip is very sharp it will cut the periodontal ligament cleanly on other hands elevator they wear out and tear the periodontal ligament so the use of elevator they are associated with more damage to the tooth structure due to the leverage forces used the luxator they will act as a wedge that separate the damaged tooth from the periodontal ligament and bony tissue so they will widen the tooth socket as it is easy to gently pull out of the tooth with the forceps so these periotrom periotoms have a sharp tip they are used for vertical luxation where no forces need it so this was all about the elevators thank you all